To episode 34 of Knits and Pieces. We are a knitting podcast coming to you from southwestern Ontario. Today is December 4? 3rd. 3rd? <laughs> okay. Today is December 3rd. Who knew? I got one more day to work on Christmas stuff. Of 2021. Okay. 2021. 21. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hanging on by a thumbnail. Anyway, I am Noelle. And I am Kelly, and welcome. Yeah, welcome. We're we're um, glad to be here, getting ready for Christmas. You know, yeah. So we could jump right in. We could. Well, we should say maybe we should say that this is our formal podcast, even though that was not a very formal intro. But this is our formal podcast where we actually go through the things that we're making. Um, things that we've already finished, uh, maybe some plans for the future, and kind of go through some admin. On Tuesdays, we have our knit chat, and that's more informal, where we just, where where you knit and we just we hang we out, we just chat, we hang we out, we chat, chat. we yes. chat about knitting, yeah, uh, we chat about a lot of things. Last yeah. week, there seemed to be less knit chat and more chat chat, but that's okay too. Some yeah. weeks are like that. That's what. That's what knit chat would be like if you went to the coffee shop. That's right. That's exactly right. If you go with your friends, you don't always talk about knitting. Like, usually you are knitting, but you're talking about just lots of other things. Absolutely. So so we should start off maybe with maybe with what we're wearing. Okay. 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 Do you want me to go first? <laughs> I was going to say, why don't we start out with prizes? And then we'll segue into what we're wearing. <laughs> okay, Because then that will be part of my FO. Okay. Okay, cut that Let's out. talk about prizes. Okay. <laughs> In our Ravelry group, we are hosting a year-long sock cow. And um, so we can do the prize today for the end of November. Yep. And by the end of November, we had 1,323 entries That's amazing. into our sock cow. That is amazing. That's Gorgeous a socks. a lot of socks. A lot of socks. So we draw two prizes this mm -hmm. year, each month. And if you entered your sock at the beginning of the year, you have the opportunity to win for the whole year. And um, we have the first prize was donated. It's a pattern prize mm -hmm. by our friend Natalie of Remembrances Pottery. And I'm going to run her information uh, down below. Yeah. And she is a fantastic uh, pattern designer as well as a potter. Yes. And she just has these beautiful, beautiful sock patterns. And now her very first sweater, sweater pattern. pattern. Yeah which is amazing. Yeah. So um, we did a random number generator and the random number chosen was pattern, or sorry, number 476. Congratulations, Linda. And then Noelle, you can talk about the second prize. Okay, um, the second prize is um, a set of self-striping yarn by Turtle Pearl Yarns. Turtle Pearl Yarns is a dyer in, I believe it's in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And they're matched so that if you start at the same place, your socks should turn out exactly the same. So this color is called In My Element and it's like silver and gold. So it's kind of the perfect color for, if you get them knit in December for Christmas socks. Or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's our prize for um, the winner that Kelly's got picked here. So what number was it, Kelly? 701, which is Ellie. Congratulations, okay, congratulations. Ellie. Congratulations. Congratulations to both our winners. If you want to get a hold of Kelly or myself, either through Instagram or through Ravelry, and we need to know your mailing address for the sock prize. And if you just give us your information for the pattern prize, we'll get the code to you for your pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so congratulations again, and keep getting those socks in there. You know, you've got December now, and at the end of December, I think we were talking about doing like a, um, we'll do the December, but then we'll do kind of like a, a, big, a bigger a, prize, a bigger for prize. going back for the whole year and doing a prize for the whole year. Do you think we can hit 1,500 pairs of socks by the end mm -hmm. of December? I think so. I think so. Okay, Gold. so we were at 1,323. Yep. Let's see. Can can everybody knit up to 1,500 pairs? Okay. Well, we don't even exciting. have yours or my pairs in there. No, 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 no. So. We don't. <laughs> well, 
That wouldn't be very fair. No, I know that, but I'm just saying as far as numbers. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so we'd love to see it. If we could get to 1,500 pairs of socks, that would be amazing. So. All right. Okay. Right now we can talk about what we're wearing. Okay. But you can start. Okay, I'll start. So this is my Primrose sweater. It's a pattern by Marie Wallen. I bought a kit through the Woolly Thistle that came with all the colors together. So these, I didn't pick out the colors. This is exactly the way the pattern is written. It comes in a book. I believe the book is called Gentle. And I loved knitting it. I loved the yarn. I should just do a quick mm -hmm. scan so you can see a little more of it. Anyways, put a photo, we can put a photo uh, yeah, in I'll put, I'll put a photo in or I'll give Kelly a photo. But it was done in Marie Wallen's own yarn, which is called British Breeds, which is a mix of four different yarns. I can't remember them all, but it's, it is a woolly wool, but it's like, it's a little bit rustic, but I don't think it feels. It doesn't feel. No, and I mean, I'm wearing it next to skin. I don't, I mean, I don't have a t-shirt or a camisole. I do have a bra. <laughs> I don't have a t-shirt or a turtleneck or a camisole, and it doesn't bother me to wear it. So it's, and it's actually nice and cozy. It's warm because with the all over fair all, you basically got a double stranded mm -hmm, sweater all the mm -hmm, way. But mm -hmm. yep. So this is actually, this is the first time I've worn it. The colors are so beautiful. I you. love the pattern. I, I do. It. it was, I loved knitting it. I did do some modifications when I made it because on her original pattern, where this gold is right here, that's where she had split for the sleeves. Right. So then your yoke would have been a lot higher, but I knew I didn't want, I didn't want to be lifting my arm up and the whole sweater mm -hmm. kind of coming up. So I just adjusted and did, I forget how many more rows, but did, you know, a few more rows before I actually did my separation for the sleeves because mm -hmm. the sweater was knit um, bottom up. Oh, okay. So what I did was I measured, I looked at my um, gauge, which I figured out after I started knitting the sweater, not before. But I looked at my gauge, my row gauge, and I looked at how many rows were left knitting the pattern. Mm -hmm. And I know how deep I like my yoke to be. Yes. So I just adjusted from there. So I knew, okay, I've got, I, I need to start my yoke at a certain point. So I'm going to knit the rest of it up, knit that up on the sleeve before I join it all together. It looks great. So thanks. Thanks. Great. I really, I love the colors. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's perfect. So. All the colors are perfect on you. And then you've knit. You're I'm on, on, I'm on the one. second one. I want to get back to it, but I've just got a lot of Christmas knitting to get done. So when Christmas is over, I'll be back to the, it's the yellow card again that I'm knitting. So, so pretty. I'll get back to that. And I am wearing, well, this is going to segue right into our FOs. So this is um, one of my FOs for the month, and it is the Celtic Knot Sweater by Helene's Knit House. And it's gorgeous. I really like it. I love so it. this cable goes all the way down. This is there's no good way to show this sweater off. I'll put pictures in, but look at this cable. I know, it's beautiful. All the way down. And um, I used uh, Drops Alaska, and the color is yeah, that doesn't 62 feel. Fog Mix. No, it it's, feels nice. It feels quite nice. Yeah. Now, I do have a t-shirt underneath, but I'm You're less of a woolly person You're more than more sensitive you. than I am. But I really like it, and I mm. love the way the design of... I keep going for the wrong sleeve, but I like the way this this comes down here. Yep. I really like that, and um, yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of so it must have been almost like contig contiguous. Contiguous, yeah. yes. And it's funny because I had knit the first sleeve, um, like well, I mean, you knit down to here, and then you finish the body. Right. And um, I like the the extra wide ribbing, and then mm -hmm. that's along the waist as well. But I had finished the first sleeve, and I was halfway through the second one, and all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb moment. And I don't know why, like, the, it's not that the cabling is hard, but it was just, you know, I was still referring back to my charts. And then once I got halfway through the second sleeve, I'm like, oh, I've got this. Mm -hmm. And it was just flying along. And then by the time I finished the sweater, I was almost a little sad that I was done. But yeah, the cables are really pretty because they've got that one stitch in it too, a where it's kind of like stitch. a smock stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, that's there. Pretty. So, and, and then, so like the sleeves also, you are purling the whole mm -hmm. sleeves, but I didn't mind purling because it's the whole sleeve. It's not... Like knit pearl, knit pearl. You're not right. doing a ribbing, right? So, um, yeah, I'm re I'm really happy yeah, with it. Nice. I did start it. I started it last year, but then I started it. Oh, sorry, I started it this year, but early in the year. So then, once the warm weather came, I lost my mojo to finish it. Uh, well, but it's too heavy to work on. It, it was to hold too in your lap when it's hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I finished it up, and I know I'm going to get lots of wear out of it. Well, this it's gorgeous. Winter. It's really pretty, and mm -hmm. it's not even a color that I would normally pick. This is not. 
But it is when you showed it to me more, and I mean, I know I've seen it before, it looked more gray, mm -hmm. but actually like it's really got a nice kind of like an icy blue tinge to it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah. But yet really I pretty. think depending on what you wore it with, you would, it would take on different mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's nice. And it's not kind of heathery, not just a solid. Yeah. 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 Really and like it's it. a nice neckline too. It's sort of like a, like a mock. Mock neck. Yep. So yeah. Yep. Anyway, it's very pretty. So she's, uh. I don't know of any other patterns that she's done, but I know that there, I think there are only six of these sweaters made wow. on Ravelry and it's kind of a shame because it's a beautiful pattern and it was really fun to knit. So, and I know you use the Alaska, but I'm thinking you could probably use the, um, the Patagonia, not Patagonia, the Juniper Moon Farms Santa Cruz. You could. And yes. then that would be even a softer feel because that's a cotton. Mostly. No, 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 no. The Santa Cruz is a hundred percent. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, right. But I'm it's, thinking but of... it's a, it's a Merino. Right, it's a, right. a non-super wash So it merino. would be softer. Yeah. But anyway, but. so this was incredibly affordable too. Using Drops Alaska, I think the whole sweater cost me $36. Wow. So Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going on to other FOs. Right into FOs. Okay. Okay, so my first one is my lucky dip number 11. <laughs> so You're almost there. I'm almost there. So almost this there. is... This is just a pair of opal socks. I basically just did a plain vanilla sock, um, two by two rib, straight knitting down to the heel. I did an afterthought heel for this one. I was actually thinking I was going to put a different, like a contrast color in, but where I ended up at the toe, I thought, well, if I do the heel, it'll give me that nice little Boomer, bullseye. Bullseye, yeah. Yeah, so I just did that. And then I did the, and I'll, I'll send you some pictures too. I did the centered double decrease when I did my decreases for the heel mm -hmm. and for the toe. And it's the decrease where you just get that one straight line going down. Mm -hmm. So it gives just a nice kind of neat, I don't know. I, I do it a lot. Um just to change things up a bit. It's nice. But I do like it. And I, I really like that, that color of that sock color, yarn. Right? It's not pretty. So that, it's an opal yarn. Um, I'll link to the pad or to the project page so it'll have the color number because it just had a color number, not a name. And, but I mean, like when you look at a yarn like that too, like you could put all, you could have put all sorts of things in for mm -hmm. the color of the heel Absolutely. and the toes. But I just thought it looked nice for the, the all-in-one. So that's pair number, number 11 finished. And number 12, I just started today. <laughs> so. I realized I didn't put my socks on blockers. Kind of sock blocker. Okay, well, I'll, I'll carry on. Next. Carry okay. on. I'll, I'll get my sock blockers dressed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so my next, I've actually got, I'm working on my, um, this one was a whip last time. So uh, this is the Festival Dress by Petite Knits. So this is the first one that I did, and it's done in Sand and Scarn Saisu, and this is the Purple Heather colorway, which is the main color. And then all the little bobble rows are a hand spun that I spun from a braid of fiber from Stitch Noir, and it was their B-A-F-U, Be a Freaking Unicorn colorway. Aww. And it's just a perfect color for little girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I did a, a little bit of modifications. The pattern had... Um, the neck was a turnover neck and this is for my granddaughter Zoe and she gets very hot and I knew that would be too much for her around the neck. And this is a fingering weight yarn. So hers is done in a fingering weight. The pattern is, does actually call for a fingering weight yarn. Um, and she's not very big around. So I actually did a smaller size around, but then just added length to the body. So then down at the bottom, I, I didn't quite increase as much as I was going down because I didn't want it to flare out too much, mm -hmm. but I wanted the added length because I wanted it to fit them for, I wanted it to fit her for a while. Well, that's right? the great thing too about the dresses yeah. is, you know, even if she does sprout yeah. up, children for quite a while don't sprout out, right? right. So, so this is going to fit her as a tunic. Yeah. It's so pretty too. So, so pretty. So that's number one. And I might as well talk about this one too. This is number two. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So this one is even longer because Molly is taller than Zoe. And this one, I knew I still had two more dresses to do. So I decided I was going to work it up in a DK weight yarn mm -hmm. as opposed to a fingering weight yarn. So this yarn is Barocco Vintage DK. This color is called Fuchsia. Even though it's more purpley, it's really not Fuchsia. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Well, I don't know. I think it's, our screen is showing it a little more purple. Purpley. And it is kind of heathery when you look at it. It, it is. It's a pretty color. 
It's got that blue heather in it, yeah. right? That purpley blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, um, what I did for this one is Petite Knits also has the festival sweater. And the festival sweater is done in DK. So I got the DK pattern as well for the sweater. And then I just modified it. But again, it was supposed to have the... Um, turn down neck. I just did the plain neck because I figured in the DK weight yarn like that's it's enough neck for a dress, right? Mm -hmm. So I Absolutely. just did it single. Um, but what I did was the sweater, because it's a sweater as opposed to a dress, the measurements were looser like around here because okay. you'd expect them to be wearing something under a sweater. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I went and picked the size that was closest to the chest width that would have been for the dress. Okay. Right? And right. then right. and then so it was actually a smaller size that I started off with. And then basically once I got to the split for the sleeves, then I just started kind of doing measurements of what the width of the dress was supposed to be at that point and adjusting my stitches accordingly. Okay. So Wow. That's and so, so sweet. on these there was less rows that I had to knit in between to get the same length. So all in all, it did take it did take a little bit less time doing the DK weight than it did doing the uh, I have to say weight. too, like, I mean, and this is beautiful, but this is definitely softer. Yes. That the uh, Barocco. Right? Yeah. But the Barocco is just, it has 40% wool in it, mm -hmm. but it does have acrylic and nylon, I think. But it's so pretty. Yeah. And the Saisu is 80% um, wool, 20% nylon. Mm -hmm. um, but the Saisu is a little bit more, it's more like the German sock yarn. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So there's number two. They're so cute. And in whips, you'll see number three. <laughs> So, yeah, I think they'll look, they'll look, we'll make sure that we get a picture of it to put in I the next I can't wait podcast. to see that picture. So. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yep. So those are. Okay. And then, oh, shoot. I forgot to bring the magazine over. Oh, sorry. Okay. This was on the cover of a Vogue Knitting magazine. This is my next one. And it's called the Perpendicular Cowl. And. That's it's fun. It, yeah, it, it's, it's neat. It's, it's the way it's so worked up. Or the... I'm going to try to put it on, and I hope I don't end up pulling out hairpins or whatever <laughs> in the process. Oh, well, there we go. We've got hair everywhere. But I like this. Yeah. Look at that. It's just like a really fun cowl, and you can kind of play with the stripes and wear them. I think I've got it twisted. There we go. Like that. Right. It goes a little bit more like that. And then you can just put this V kind of wherever, wherever you, you want to yeah. have it. And then the stripes carry up and through here. So it's fun. And I'm thinking, like, I would wear this over a vest, mm -hmm. um, just with a sweater underneath, or even it's not too heavy to wear underneath a winter coat. Yeah, it's, it's I a was little, thinking it would be perfect for underneath. A little heavy coat. to wear with this sweater right now. But <laughs> no, but here. like for in your coat, because then you've got a little bit more coverage, so you can kind of even keep the top button of your coat yeah. open. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. And it's so soft. And it was fun to knit. So I used up, this was stash yarn. and. I ended up, I have this knitting bag. Look at that. It's the I perfect know, color. Perfectly. Perfect color. <laughs> so I was using up some deep, deep, deep stash. This was the, um, the, let me see, the Estelle Yarns Al Alpaca Merino Chunky. And I've. Ooh, that's soft. It is that's so nice. soft. Yeah. Not quite like butter, but. <laughs> so I used. discuss that. <laughs> I used cream. I used blue jeans and wine mm. you gotta have the wine <laughs> right and then i also had this is actually the uh venice chunky okay because that's that's your little color blips. Yeah. yeah so there's some little color blips in there too right and i'm yeah yeah I'm it looks really good happy with it feels it. nice it feels and really nice yeah it's soft just so soft and I think this will be really cozy for going out walking. Yeah, it's a neat stitch too. Is that is it like a broken rib sort of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. Yep. And it didn't take very long to do. And it's a fun construction. So it's basically just two long rectangles. So you started, um, I started here. So you do the three colors first, then you did a white section and then this blue, and then you join on to the blue and you go in the other direction with okay. the next triangle. And then you picked up stitches and just knit up the cowl neck. And I I really like the neckline on it because I do find that sometimes a cowl, like the neck is just almost a little too loose yeah, yeah. to be a cowl. So I often prefer a scarf because I like my neck to be yeah. kind of wrapped Actually, in a little tighter. But this is a good 
a good cowl. I might really make one cowl. of those for my mom because she's always cold like around here and she would just wear that like inside. She wouldn't, it wouldn't be like for going yeah. inside. She just, to give that little bit of extra warmth around your neck it's and. almost a dicky. Remember those? Yes. It's almost yeah. a dicky, yep. but I, I'm really happy with it. Yep. And, and, I, it's, and it's nice when you've got a cowl like that because sometimes with um, a shawl, it's hard to position it and keep it where it, in place where it's supposed to be. Yeah, in. And like that, so, once I get it on and where I want it, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But I was excited to use up stash, although... Still got a lot left. <laughs> I still got stashes left. Like, I have all of this left. And I thought, oh, this will be great. You know, this was deep, deep stash, but I still have stash. I guess I could make another one and gift it away. But uh, it was fun. It yeah, was a fun yeah. quick knit. Quick knit. Okay. Do you have any more? Yeah, I have one more. Okay. Well, you go first. Okay. And then mine leads into the next thing. <laughs> We're all about the segue tonight. All about the segue. So these are my, I'm going to call them my Knit Chat socks because these are what I've been working on the last few weeks at Knit Chat. And they look really pretty on they the do. screen. They look really, really good. bright they look pretty and colorful. Well, they do, but they're really vibrant on the screen. So um, these are just a pattern that I made up. It's my own sock recipe, a 60 stitch sock. I do a little kind of a little fancy shell stitch. I did it right down the front of the foot this time. Um, German short row heel and just a regular, a rounded, rounded toe, toe, rounded toe. And this was yarn that I purchased at Lama Lane in Hanover and it is Naco Boho, and it, the color is 81264. That's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. It, and I like, I like the uh, self pattern. I yards. do too. I, like I, and I, and I, it, they're fun to knit because you, especially on the first sock, you don't know what's coming next. Yeah. And yeah. they have long repeats. Yes, they do. Well, yeah, it is. It's a really long repeat. Yeah. So, and they come in 100 gram balls, and I know that I still have, oh, I left it upstairs, but I probably, like this might be 70 grams, yeah. so there's still 30 yep. grams left, which would be almost enough to do like a shorty pair yep. if you did if a you contrast, did a contrast yep. heel and toe. Yeah. 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 So these, uh, I think these are going to get gifted. Um, I've got somebody in mind for those, but all yeah, done. They look good. So. All done. Okay. So my last. Oh, finally, <laughs> we get to see the hats. So here, you can hold up that one. So this is, keep this, one. this is the August hat. No. Yes. Yes. I was thinking, is it August or May or April? It's August. <laughs> it's August. It's the August hat by Sarah, Sarah Solomon. Um, this is done. Yeah. This is done in Juniper Moon Farms. Um, the main color is the Santa Cruz. So this one is anthracite. No, that one is anthracite. Mm -hmm. And this one is huckleberry. So this was yarn that I had left over from a sweater I did, and that was yarn that I bought specifically. Actually, you brought me that yarn back from BC. Yes. yes. So, and then the white is a, a Samoyed blend from Belfast Mini Mills. It's 75% Samoyed and 25% Merino. And it's you got cannot like an believe yellow. how soft these hats are. Yeah. They, the, they're, I love they're it. so soft. I put it on, my hair's gonna be a mess, but whatever. <laughs> I can't get it over my ponytail there it's it's like I love it and I tried I tried it on at your house mm -hmm. that day and I love hats but I don't look good in hats I have such a pinheady head and I tried this on and I said even I look good in this yeah. hat I love so, this hat so I think so this one this one is mine and that one is for my husband because he really liked it too yeah, pretty that crown and it's nice so because you can pull it right down over your ears and but it doesn't feel like super tight on no, your head like no. But so, warm, like this is a dense hat. And this it's, is really it's, dense. It basically, it's half a skein of the Santa Cruz, like a half of a hundred gram skein. And I'm not sure quite how much, but I'll link all to my Ravelry page and it'll say how much yarn I used in it. But it's like really. And I, I love know. the Latvian braid. Yeah, the Latvian too. braid so was pretty. fun. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed Are these it. Both it was the same size. Like, did the you only thing different in his is that, like, you see how how the pattern starts right there. I think with his, I have an, just an extra row at the top and an extra row at the bottom. But the so circumference, it's only a, the it's circumference the same is size. the same. But that is one thing. I did do it on a 3.75 millimeter needle, which is smaller than the pattern called for. But I think the Santa Cruz was a little bit heavier than the weight that the actual okay. pattern called for. So I thought if I go down needle size, then you'll just get like a, a thicker fabric. Yep. But the size is, is good. They're so, beautiful. Thanks. Beautiful. So that leads into our, that's leading into our, um, little parade of some of our 
ideas for our yes. warm winter woolies. <laughs> so I have to think of that. So this would be this would be an awesome project for it because it's basically it's thick yarn it works up quick quickly knit. yes it's a quick yeah. knit and you don't have to have the samoyed like you could just do it with two colors of like like you could have had the the cream color in the santa cruz and it would have worked fine mm -hmm. or you could take um a lighter worsted and hold it with a mohair yes and you could do that and yeah, yeah super fast knit so so pretty look at the loft look at the loft i know i love these i love this and it was fun to knit because it worked up quickly. And again, I was also, and I am going to, I was also going to take the pattern and just do this part and make a headband. Yes, you right? can do that Especially because like for right now when I've got my hair in a ponytail, <clears throat> it would be nicer just to have a headband than yeah. to have something that you pulled on over the top of your head. And you have your hair up a lot too, mm -hmm. where it might be nice just to have a headband. And I think it'd be a, a, like a perfect width. It would. Yeah. It would. Yeah. And the nice little finishing around the with the Latvian braids, like I, I think it. it would make a really good headband. So maybe I'll maybe I'll try and work one of those up sometime before the the cow's over and I love it. See how it works out. So, so that was my last whip. So now we're gonna fo. Sorry, fo. That was my last fo. So now we're gonna go kind of through some things that we have made in the past, and but they're perfect for the the warm winter woolies knit along. Yes. So kind of an accessory parade yes winter outdoor winter accessory and these are our, like our kind of tried and true yeah. and our favorites too so and we're not going to spend a lot of time we're going to no. go through and them I, but i will list quickly. them all with i will list them all in the show notes and um i'll actually put a link to the actual main pattern page okay so because we may not have all of ours on there so the first one that I'll show, and I know you got me going on these last year, and then I made one for myself and a few as gifts. This is, is the Winter Morning Headband by Kalura Hudson. Mm -hmm. And it's super quick. That's like a one evening project. project. Yeah. Um, it has, this is a really dark color, so it's maybe not the best one to show you, but it's the one I kept for myself. So it has a nice fat cable down yep. there. Yep. And you just use Lion Brand Woolies Quick and Thick. And out of one band, one skein of wool ease I could get two, two of these yes. exactly two yeah and these like Noel said these are perfect when you've got a ponytail yeah yep or, 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 again, or sometimes sometimes when it's not as cold out and you don't need the full hat my hair's gonna be like a mess by the end of <laughs> okay, this okay forget it <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. nope <laughs> you're knocking the stars dude Damn there oh well, I like it because it's on the forehead right yeah and that's the part of me when I'm walking that gets so cold is your forehead. So yeah, and I just, I, I need to have my ears covered. Yeah. So very nice. Okay. So that's, well, I might as well try this one on now too. <laughs> so this one, this is one that I did last year. Oh, I forgot about that yeah, one. Yeah. And this is the, it's called the, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but I think it's Dreyo. So it's, it's Danish, a Danish name. It's by Fiber Tales. It's a free pattern. I did mine in um, Madeline Tosh Pashmina, but it's two strands held together. So again, it's uh, getting better at this. <laughs> there. I, I mean, I would fix my hair before I went out somewhere, <laughs> but it just gives you an idea. So it just covers the ears. Yes. And yeah, so if you're just like sometimes even if you're just going out to the car, but it's still cool in the car, you don't necessarily need the whole big hat. Mm -hmm. But it's nice. I like having my ears covered. Mm -hmm. I just find if wind gets in my ears, it's really cold. So that again, if you haven't tried brioche, it's brioche. It's like a one color brioche. So that was kind of neat. It gives it a really squishy, soft, like, and the pashmina is so feels soft. amazing. Yeah. So, but super quick project, great gift idea. And that only took like 36 grams of yarn to do that. Okay. So now my hair is a mess. <laughs> I can't see. Okay. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> Well, I have one hat left. You sure you don't want to try it? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so since we're on hats, we'll we'll work our way from the head down. How about that? So this is a hat that I made uh, from yarn that I bought at um, Knit City in Vancouver, and it's the Tamatuck hat by Shannon Cook. And I bought yarn to make one for myself and one for my daughter. Um, I love this because you talk about something warm. warm yeah. It's and this is made in the hinterland watershed, and this is the color ash. That feels nice. It's really yeah. nice, and there is no wind getting through this, that, so yep. it's it's a fun pattern because it sort of has these like carried stitches mm -hmm. across it that I really like, and it just again I 
find that because my head's so long and thin, I need a little more width to round it out. So the 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 other hat that we showed, and then this one does that as well, because yeah. it's like a nice hat. But it's got just the perfect amount of slouch. You do get slouch. My only critique, and this was on me, um, I decided to do a fur pom-pom instead of or, no, I mean, a, a yarn, yarn pom-pom pom -pom. instead yeah. of a fur. And this yarn pom-pom, because this is a heavy hat, it's a pretty heavy palm. Yeah. So yeah. when I'm walking, I can kind of feel, feel it bobbing okay. <laughs> where I think that I wouldn't have felt it as much, but I love the hat yeah. and I love the yarn. And I made one for my daughter too, and uh, she really likes it. So it's super cozy. Okay. Do you have any other hats? I do. Okay. So this is the Banff hat by Tin Can Knits. And again, this one I did in, it's got the Samoyed in it. So actually all those three hats, the two that were in my finished objects and this hat were all out of the same, the same skein of Samoyed. That is so pretty. So this is, um, like I said, it's the, it's the Banff hat by Tin Can Knits. The, this main color is, um, Belfast Mini Mills there. It's like a worsted weight Merino. So again, it's super soft, warm hat. Even that's, that palm is Might as well impressive. put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Actually, oh, it I even fits it. over my ponytail. That's so, so pretty. I don't even yeah. think I've seen that one. That's nice. And warm. This one's a couple of years old, but yeah, I do like I do wear it in the winter and yeah, I really like it. So, okay. Um, we'll save these ones to the end because we okay. have a bunch of those. Okay. okay. So back. Okay. Moving down to the neck because you're done hats. I'm done hats. This is my um, getting warmer cowl by Espas Tricot. It's a, it's a free pattern, right? I think most of theirs are free patterns. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a free pattern. And this I made in Brooklyn Tweed Quarry in the colorway granite. And this is just, um, I don't think I, I don't know. I, I'm going to try to put it on. <laughs> we should have planned for this. We should have, you know, wore tight no buns or something. I mean, my hair is all over the place now. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a hot mess by the time this is done. <laughs> okay, again, I, I talked about how much I love cowls that snug my neck and not just hang really super loose. This snugs my neck and my shoulders, yeah. so it's like the best of all possible worlds. And that I like nice to wear... Too. Yeah, it's so <laughs> no. nice, I know. And I don't rem I'm sorry, I don't remember how much yardage it took, but it's just super cozy. And I like to wear that... Um, I will throw a hat on if I'm out walking, but usually this will kind of go on the outside of well, my Well, you can coat. almost pull that up a little bit over your ears. Like well, if you, you can, walking, and I yeah. have. Yeah. My braid is holding it down. But yeah. And the other thing I'll do with it is this, too, when yeah. I'm out walking, because I like my face to be covered up, too, sometimes. But it's... Um, it was fun, It's and it's a very simple. It always makes me think kind of like of a chimney or, or a kettle. It's just this, like, bell-shaped... Um, towel with the nice rib on the bottom yeah, it's nice. and it's mostly garter until you get down here to the bottom I've got my hair hanging from it but it's really really soft and um yeah I've gotten a lot of wear out of this so this is one of my so favorites. when you did it did you do it in the round is it in the round no because it's or do you knit it knit? okay okay so then you're knitting back and you're knitting all the time right because if you did it in the round you'd have to knit one row per row to, to get think. the garter yes yes yeah. yes okay. because then okay. I did a mattress stitch for the garter okay. yes so, and then I think it has, I'm trying to think of how I did the increases. I did this one a couple of years ago, but, um, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Super easy, really fun pattern. Okay. Okay. So what are we going to go to now? All the way down to hands. Hands. Okay. Hey, okay, we've got lots of hands. <laughs> okay. So this is my first hands. These oh, are, these are the Yog, Yog, Yog Crystal Mitts by Skein Deer Knits. I've knit these probably four years ago. I got the yarn out when we were out in Nova Scotia. The yarn is Shetland Spindrift. And at the time I bought like the three colors for the mitts, which is like the gray, the, I think the red was called Cardinal and the cream. And I did two pairs out of it. So I had three skeins there and the Spindrift is just 25 gram skeins. Mm -hmm. So I did two pairs. The other pair was the gray was the main. And then it just had a little bit of trim with the red. So I gave those to my daughter-in-law. And she wears them all the time. Like she wears them and then she wears a pair of those little skinny, the little, um, the little skinny yeah, gloves the tiny underneath gloves. Mm -hmm. and then puts these over top of them. So, but yeah, like I, I really like these. I love how the spin drift has kind of like felted and just like the, the fabric is really solid and I just love the pattern on them. It's really pretty. And then on the back, they've got the, 
I like this little black details too. Yeah. Or I guess charcoal. Great, yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's a pretty pattern. Yep. So I, I, they were fun to knit too. I would do those again, especially now because when I did these, I, I didn't have the nine inch. I know. Cirque, so I, I know. Would do them I know. Again I know. With the nine so we did them. Cirque. Yes. Yep. So um, I had always really liked those that she had. So that inspired me to find a similar pattern. And I made these ones, which are called the Hedgerow by Marianne Stevens. And I don't know if you've done any patterns the color work by Marianne Stevens, but her color work is absolutely beautiful. And these are, I love yeah, these. Nice. I wear these. These are probably my most worn hand warmers. And this was yarn that we got in New York yes. at Brooklyn General. No. Nitty City. Was it? I think so. Okay. I think so. <laughs> I think it was. I think you're right. I think and it was it's um, Elemental Effects Natural Shetland Fingering. Now, the only complaint I had is that although it's called fingering, this is a dense, dense fabric people dense fabric yeah. so it was a little hard on my hands to be knitting yeah. something so dense uh, but again if I had have had like the nine inch yeah that's thicker than a fingering because if you feel this is a fingering like if you feel the difference between yeah but it was classified as a fingering yeah. but I would say definitely it's a sport weight yeah. but the colors are so beautiful and mm -hmm. I, I wear them all the time and actually I wear it a lot when I have with that yeah with this too because they you know from Looks a distance nice. they sort of go sort of go together and I love this little bit of ochre around the edges too, right? So those are probably my favorites. Okay, for hands, keep going. Okay. So these buns are my Norwegian mittens for Mimi. And this is actually a free pattern on Ravelry. So pretty. And this, these are done in diamond luxury. Uh, it's a DK, I think it's just their DK wool. I know I wrote it, wrote it down. Highlander. It's Highlander. So it's a non-superwash wool, which is good for doing color work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just really like them. I just, I, and I actually, that yarn, I actually got at Mary Maxim's when Mary Maxim's was still in town. I was staying at my daughter's in London and they had a Mary Maxim and I thought, I just really want to knit some color work mitts. So <laughs> anyway, again, free pattern. Those, again, they have not, like felt it a little bit. So they're nice and, and cozy and was an easy pattern to knit and I think if you're doing color work like it was um you know it's a fairly easy pattern and it's free and you don't have a whole lot of detail in the cuff so the mm -hmm, cuff was easy mm -hmm. and it's a DK weight so they go a little bit faster yeah I left mine upstairs but I have similar ones mine were a skein deer pattern but the yarn that I used was actually a more commercial yarn and I used the Barocco vintage okay. DK okay well that's what I used in the girls dresses yeah yeah and yep. it's super easy yep. to manage, and it, they knit up really quickly. Yep. So I yes, because the lot DK too. ones knit up a lot faster than the fingering weight. Mm -hmm, so. For sure. Okay, and then the next ones, I did you say you brought those too? I thought I did. Maybe you didn't? Maybe I didn't. Okay, yeah, I think we might both, we definitely have, both have yeah. them though, um, and we love this pattern. It's the uh, Taxis Mittens by Pinaguri, which, is that Sophia Campbell no. Board, isn't it? No. no. Sorry, okay. So it's... Pinaguri, and we used the Rauma Lamelgarn, or I did. I don't you know did. what you I used. I used Holt Super Soft. Okay. But yeah. Look at these. Yeah. I love these. These little berries. Um, so it's a gray, um, a garnet, and a navy in there. And these are so unbelievably warm. And there's no weight to them. So no, it would I know. be the same for your Super yeah. Soft, right? Yep. There's no weight, but they are they are airtight. Nothing is getting through these babies. And, and mine mine are a little different in the fact that I had a dark color for my background. That's right. You yes. alternated. Yes, and then yeah. and then like my little branches here were in the cream and then I had like a, a pinky color in for mm -hmm. the little berries. Yeah. So yeah, super nice. I love this pattern. I have more of her, the yarn because of the, it's Norwegian yarn. Mm -hmm. I have more of the yarn to make some other of her patterns and it's yeah. Upcoming knitting. Yeah. Upcoming knitting. Okay. So my next ones are my bracken mitts and I actually have two pairs of them. This is a pattern by Kalura Hudson mm -hmm. and it's like all over cables. This one, I held a single, um, it was a worsted single, but it was like a really rustic yarn and I held it with a strand of a mink colored mohair. Mm -hmm. So that was the first pair. And then the other ones are a little more colorful and they're a little thicker because this was an Aran weight yarn. This was actually an Aran weight yarn that I got. It's Briggs and Little, but it was their, I think it's Heritage is the thicker one. It's like an Aran weight. It was a cream color and I dyed it with food coloring. 
pretty though. It's I so like pretty. it. I like it. So I dyed it with the food coloring that I can't remember the color name, but it's a color that breaks. So you can see how the, mm -hmm. the colors broke out in it. And again, I just held that with a cream colored mohair and I really like them. Yeah. They're thick. They're yeah, nice. They are nice and thick and warm. They're thicker than those ones. I like the way, um, I like the fit. I, I like the longer skinny hand, yeah. right? That's they do because they look really fit. skinny when you when you take them off, but, but when fit. you put They're them nice. on your hand, they fit nice. Look yeah, at that. look yep. at those cables. Yep, and that I, that's Kalura Hudson. She has a lot of nice. Um, well, that's from the same as the headband. Yes, the winter morning headband. Yep. So so now these ones were paid for, but the winter morning headband is a free pattern. A free one. Okay. So, all right, and then I've got one more pair of mittens. So these are definitely my chunkiest mittens that I have, and I these are the. <sighs> Hastings Mitts by Tracy Miller and um, she designed these when she went to Knit City. Hastings is a street in Vancouver and look how fun these are. So these are made out of Hedgehog Merino Aran weight in the electric blue mm -hmm. and then the gray was actually a Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and nice. Dove Heather and um, they're cozy and I like, I like that. the little, uh, yeah, yeah that little that. rib detail up at the top. And I've worn these now for a couple of years. So that yarn is wearing really well. And they, I'm pretty confident because when I'm looking at them, it looks that way that she did um, a conscious shaping okay. for your hand, right? So that this is a little bit straighter and then this is coming up on an angle. But I love these mittens and they're also really cozy warm, especially when you're doing color work. Cause like, as you said, for the sweater, you're getting sort of like a double thickness yep. all the way through these, right? And yep. they're cozy, cozy. Okay. And then our, we saved our, our oh, shifting. I have another pair here. Oh yeah, you do. Okay. Yes. So these are thrummed mittens. So these ones, like I'll only wear if I'm going for a walk. Cause I find they're like too thick to really like, I don't like driving with them on, but they're, um, one strand of, I think it's actually just like a it's, a, it's a worsted weight wool, but I can't remember what the brand is. And then the inside is, is the all, inside of them. is all thrummed. So that was just a fleece that I got and tore off little pieces of it. And then you put it on every so often on a stitch mm -hmm. and then you just get this really thick, thick, thick fluffy knit. mitten. So they're great for going out for a walk. And they end up taking like sort of the shape of your hand yes. too. Yep. the fleece inside. The only thing I would have done differently on these, I would have made the cuff tighter. And I still could do that. I could take it off and make it tighter because mm -hmm. I find the cuffs just a little bit too loose mm -hmm. for my hand. But, but and even the thrums are even are in the thumb. So yeah, it's a nice. Oh yeah, you can, they yeah. feel almost like they're stuffed. Yep. Yeah, so very nice. Okay, and then um, the last thing that we have is our shifty projects. You've heard us all talk about, or both of us talk about our shifty things before. And so this is kind of what got us going on all the shifty, all the shifty things, things yeah. all the shifty <laughs> things. And um, now I will say like, and cause you've already heard me say it a couple of times now about the cowls. I do find that this one is a little bit looser at the neck. So sometimes what I actually do is I just give it a twist at the back and I'll put like a shawl pin and, in yeah. it because I do like it to fit snug, but I love how soft this is. And this is the um, Gainer Homestead yarns. And this is what they, um, they call this knitwit, which yes. and we've seen it called crazy yeah. yarns in other yeah. places. And then we went to but this one, the Gainer Farms one is a Rambouillet. It is. Yeah. So it's, Soft. You can't believe how yeah. soft this is. It's so cozy. And then we went to um, VKL in Columbus yep. and we bought yarn to make these shifty hats and mine sort of matches. It yeah. kind of works together. And these are the hats that you may have heard us joke about before. We rushed back to the hotel room that night with a bottle of wine. Yeah. And Noelle was trying to teach me a tubular <laughs> cast on, on this tiny skinny little yarn. And we were going to have these knit we said we were going to wear them the, the next, next day. day. Didn't happen. Did not happen. <laughs> Didn't even come close. I mean, close. fingering weight yarn. <laughs> at that, at that. But um, anyway, I still love this hat because yeah. when I put it on, like I knit mine fairly long, so I get a good slouch. So when I do put it on, I'm not going to put it on. I can't do any more no. to my hair. But when I put it on, I get like a nice slouch yeah. in the back. And I really well, actually, like it. I'm not going to put it on either, but it, the, actually the length of it, it, it will go over my ponytail. Yes. So, yeah. so it's cozy. And then from there, we went on to do, well, we have shifty shawls. I had my shifty mitts and I thought I brought them too, but here, let me just pull this basket back here. Noelle's goodie basket. Yep. Okay. 
No, it doesn't look like it. No. Okay. But, uh, so, yeah. But so the shifting have, mitts aren't a pattern anyway, so. No. But she used the pattern and she turned it into a pair of mittens. Mm -hmm. So we've got all the shifty things yep. now. But anyway, that's kind so, of a quickie little parade yeah. on some of our favorite accessory knits anyway. And um, it's what we use to stay warm in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing about the accessories is like they're they're fun to do and they're like instant gratification right when you're doing a sweater and like it takes forever and, and you like working on it and you want to see the finished thing but it takes time but sometimes you just need to have something finished to give you that kind of little i don't know push or whatever and it's just nice to well, finish something it's kind of like that little palette cleanse too yeah. sometimes after a larger project when you're finished a sweater or something you think oh i just want something where i can have something really quick yeah so it's uh it is a fun little palette cleanse and honestly, any of these projects are fantastic gifts. There isn't anybody that wouldn't no, like getting right. a single one of these yeah. things. So. so our Cal is running until the end of January. Yep. So even if you're involved with a lot of Christmas knitting now, it still gives you another whole month after to make a few things for yourself or who knows, even make a few things and put them away till the next year. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be great? We yeah. say that we're gonna be that organized. We're never that organized, so. Okay, well, that's, um, Oh, you're yeah. going to talk about this and finished objects. Oh, yeah. Going back to finished <laughs> objects because we're all over the place. I don't know why we took notes tonight. Well, I know. We are Whatever. not sticking to the notes. So this behind me, we might let's yeah. separate a little bit for a second. These are some, I'll start with the paper stars. So there's been some little um, tutorials, little TikTok-y things going around on Instagram, and I've become obsessed with watching people fold paper. So I decided to just try my hand at folding paper stars. So I made some stars. And then I thought they look it would- amazing. They're really, they really pretty. Do. And I'm they were a lot of fun to do. A lot of fun to do. So my daughter-in-law came over and we sat down here and had some crafting time. And then I have decorated with some other goodies and everything else. Well, this one is mine. I made this. What was the star called, Noel? Starnia. Starnia, yes. <laughs> So I made that last year, I think. I made a couple of those, and I usually hang these things on my trees. And then everything else you see up here is from Noel. These have been little gifts to me. And this is her little Moshi Moshi snowman, <laughs> one of my favorites. And then she makes these precious little sweaters, which we keep thinking would look amazing as full-size sweaters. Yes. And then she's got a little, a little mitten here. So these are things that normally hang on my tree, but... I, I really like this idea. It's pretty. I it think it would look really pretty. pretty hanging in a window. And then I just wrapped some fairy lights yep. around it. So um, we thought we would kind of give you a little bit of a festive set. So mm -hmm. for this podcast and the next, or no, not the next podcast, the next podcast, we're going to be in front of a tree. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's really just this one. But yep. if you tune into Knit Chat, I'm, yeah. I'm hanging out okay. with this okay. for the month of December for Knit Chat. So you'll get to see this some more. And if there's anything up here that you're interested in seeing patterns yeah, I'll, for, I'll, you've well, got any of them that, that have too. patterns, I'll link in the show notes. Yeah, so, so it's just a pretty little seasonal piece that I might want to hang upstairs on the times when we're when I'm not podcasting. I, yeah, I really down like here. I really like the idea of it. With the, it gave me great joy to look at yeah. last night after I decorated it and I hung in the little sweaters and I thought there is nothing cuter than that. <laughs> like that just feels homey and yep. um, yeah, it's great. So okay. okay, so we can move on to our whips. We can move on to whips. I have only one whip. I have I yeah. have. Whips planned. I have lots of whips planned, but I'm in between things right now. Okay, I'm down to a whip, so my, I'm going to let you. My whip basket over. <laughs> I don't have that. She's got a basket for FO. She's got a basket for whips. I do. Okay. So the first one is really, I just started it. <laughs> like just. And that's not it. <laughs> it's a whip wannabe. <laughs> it's a whip wannabe. It's my, it's my final lucky dip for... 2021 so 20, it's my December are one. you do you think you're gonna lucky dip your way through 22 yeah I think I, I am, am. Yeah. yep so this is it that's all I've got <laughs> <laughs> barely a whip barely a so whip. this is my this yeah, is my show the yarn <laughs> I will show the yarn so it is there we go oh I love West Yorkshire spinners oh, I forget what the colorway is called it's one of their Christmas colorways from one year Hollyberry, I think it might be there's not a name so it's probably something you have to go online to see, I think right? it's Hollyberry but again like I'll link the project so it'll say what it is in there yeah. so this is my last pair it's an adult male pair so it's a 72 stitch sock um, I think this one I actually might do um, socks on a plane not snakes, the, on a plane. not snakes on a plane. Not snakes on a plane. <laughs> not snakes on a plane. 
<laughs> so I think I might do socks on a plane, which just has the cable going down the the side of it. Mm -hmm. Just for, because it's easy to keep track of how many rows you've done then. This was such a great idea too. Big thank you to... It was Kate, Kate of, of Hawthorne, Hawthorne Cottage. Cottage. Yep. And she um, inspired you to yep. join in the Lucky Dip Cal. And it's fantastic because now, you know, you're at the end of the year and, and you're going to be 12 pairs of socks yep. in. That is gift giving for well you. and it's perfect for my family because i've got 12 adult pairs to do now i do have the three granddaughters too and i did theirs with one skein um one of the months so for me i'm just getting another pair that i knit through the year so anyways because i haven't worn them yet so i think that mine are actually going to be the ones that you gave me the yarn for the fjord oh nice. because they look christmasy nice. right? they do yeah so, they're yeah. really pretty so but that way everybody's got their christmas socks and ross is gonna package them all up because we have our little Nelson Family Christmas Socks logo that go on the outside. and mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll get my picture. Once these are done, I'll get my picture on the fireplace with all of the stockings hanging up again. But it was a perfect way to do it because I didn't have to think of it throughout the year. I just mm -hmm. knew that every month I was going to pull one. So I do think I'm going to do it again next year because I have lots of croy. I think I have enough croy to do everybody a pair. I could probably join in. You should. I you have should. an it entire was, tote was, box yep. of that. Yes. So, yeah. So... That was my first whip. Okay, keep going because okay, I I'll go literally with my have one. Okay, so my second is I've got the first one done. So last podcast, Kelly had the Cielo. Cielo hand warmers. Cielo hand warmers. So, and I was just in love with the yarn and the feel of it. So she gave me this skein and it's just a gorgeous color. This color is called. They feel like butter. They don't feel like butter. <laughs> they feel like cashmere. <laughs> <Anyways>. <laughs> Kelly, if I get butter on my hands, I have to go wash them. <laughs> and, oh, look, they look nice with my sweater. Everything looks nice with that sweater. It has every color in it. Anyway, um, they've got an amazing pattern on here. Now, um, Kelly's, yours took a little, you took a little bit more yarn, right? But yours go up, I think, a little bit further yes. on your wrist. Yes. So I had the one, she only had one skein of this color. And so all I did was cut some rows out of here mm -hmm. and started the thumb a little bit earlier. And it was perfect for doing the mitts this yeah. size which are plenty long enough for me and this is the diamond luxury baby llama heather, heather. and unfortunately not available anymore discontinued but but you could do that i think it's a dk weight yes and i there these are again would be like a great gift mm -hmm. um perfect for you know keeping your hands warm when you're touching a cold steering wheel if you know you have to do that <laughs> some of us don't <laughs> Anyway. And it's a free pattern. It's um, yes, it's by um, Claudia Unit. Q of Unit. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's my second whip. Okay, I'll show one. So you go. Yep. Yeah. And I've got this one's. I've got one sock just about done. So Andrea Mowry came out with the Curio socks, and I've. I have honestly haven't had this much fun knitting a pair of socks in a long time. Like I knit a lot of socks. Um, that is gorgeous. It's beautiful, That's, isn't it? Look yeah. at that. I have this yarn. I need to go. Yes, you do those. have that yarn because you bought me that yarn. And um, so it's like you're slipping stitches here to create these lines. And then the pattern comes two different ways. You can either. So I've done the stockinette pattern. There we go. And you can also do using garter stitches yep. in here. And she talks about that in her pattern. So I'm, I think I'm, yeah, I am. I'm at the end of the sock now. So I just have to do the ribbing. And then this one is that done. That is gorgeous. It's really pretty. I just, it's, yeah. So the yarn, just so you can kind of see what it looks like skeined up. This is yarn, um, oh, here it is. It was called Gathering Yarn. I'll try to get things going the right way I'm not doing it it's a marled sock and this was a colorway plum so it's gathering yarn and this is what it looks like skeined up mm -hmm. and it's such a slow rolling gradient right and I I'm here for it it's pretty I love it it's really pretty I love it and then I'm just using this is uh, Ravenswood fiber and she sells um, I keep thinking it's naked it's not naked <laughs> it's in the nude in the nude, okay. in the nude. and so she sells these skeins. This is this is a ridiculous price. I think it was fifteen dollars for this, and that's shipping and taxes included. Wow! So I ordered a few of them because we used to like to use the uh, and nice the, too. yeah, it's the yep. merino, right? Yep. So we used to uh, like to use the Lion brand, and that was that colorway marshmallow. Yep. Discontinued. I, I still have a couple of skeins of that. I have half a skein left. I can go and get but that. This one. is this is. Uh, oh, I keep 
getting fuzzies. So anyway, but I'm, I am loving this. So the second sock is going to look different, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, um, see yeah, it's but, it'll, but it'll, because you've got the, the but cream tie, kind of all, yeah, yeah. they'll tie together. Yep. And I just think it's beautiful and you don't have to use. And then is the heel just in the cream? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you could do that's it and your, your yeah, option, yeah. right? You could do whatever you want with it. But I, since I did the toe, yeah, I'll probably do the heel the same way. But you don't have to actually use a gradient. That's just my choice. Right. You could use something that's um, like heavily variegated yep. would look really nice too. Because whatever you're choosing here, like for these slip stitches, that's really going to control yep. um, the pattern. And then you're breaking it up every row too. Like you're basically micro striping the two yarns and... I just think it's really clever. So she did this for her um, her Thanksgiving like knit a pair of socks on okay. the weekend. Okay. I didn't do that. That I that's not why I joined. I just saw the socks and I really liked them and I thought they would make a really pretty pattern. Yeah, so, but once I got started on it, it's like working with a self striping yarn. You just want to see. I got to get yep. to the next color. Like yep. you just push yourself and push yourself. And I didn't want to stop. And I I'm in love with these. Yeah, they look great. Love with these. Those will definitely be on my list for next year. Yes, so. absolutely. Okay. So okay, what else so got going on? Well, my ne next is my muscle bro, which I really, I've got a little bit done on. I'm past the crown. But because of all the other Christmas knitting, I don't really have a lot done on it. But it's such a pretty yarn. This is Lolo Did It Super Sparkle Sock. And the muscle bro is by Isilda Teague. A lot of people are doing it. So basically, I'm at the point now where I weighed how much yarn I did for the crown. So I'm just going to knit the rest of it till I have that much left. Mm -hmm. And then the hat all gets tucked up into each other. But it's a perfect thing just to take with me when I don't. And I've seen it done in, like, it's more than just fingering weight. Because I'm seeing yes, it now done yes, in the DK yes. weights as well. Well, the pattern is you do so much and then you figure out your gauge. And then mm -hmm. by the, your gauge, you figure out how much you're going to increase. So because my fingering is actually, this is quite a thin fingering, I actually ended up going more stitches than than's even in the pattern. But I know gauge wise that it's still going to be a hat that fits yeah, so it's pretty it's yeah. such a pretty colorway i really like it it's called the color's called pretty little zombies it's lolo did it it's so pretty like i love you know when um when a dyer is using just really short blips Pink, of yeah. color i really like the way that works up yeah and it's got sparkle Super in pretty. it so i know like I'll, it'll either fit like one of the girls because you know like kids heads are really not that much smaller no like babies are but like kids like toddlers and kids are not that much smaller than adults no no so not at all. and i mean when it's a hat that you can turn up the brim then it can kind of be bigger and then they can it'll actually fit them for yeah. quite a while it's so. so pretty with that little sparkle too yeah. i'm actually i'm going to knit one i <laughs> in acquisitions i have a couple of yarn choices that i got um that i want to Knit one of those. Knit one yeah. of these. And I think that would be perfect knit chat knitting because I would like to think I could Well, yeah, especially once, you, once you've gotten once to the you're point past where this, all you're doing is knitting. You're just yeah. knitting. And so I think that would uh, that would help me out for yeah. that. Great. Okay. And then my last whip is my my third dress. Hopefully, hopefully I remember to bring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. But it fell out of the bag. <laughs> just a minute. So many, so much stuff here that they have to bring over. That even when you make a list, it's still hard. And then I have to get back up on my cushion. On your booster seat, <laughs> yes. Okay. So here is the third. Oh, one. that is such a pretty color. You're right. It is aqua. It is, yeah. So this color is again. It's the Barocco Vintage DK. That color is called Calico, and again, it's got it's the same um, hand spun that I'm using in it. So I think they're all going to look really cute together when we get the picture together. Oh, I can't wait to see this so, picture. And again, the mods on this one, I did I did actually the Italian cast on, which is different than a tubular because it's not tubular. You actually start knitting it right away. Yes. So I did the Italian bind off on, okay. on one of the sweaters that I did this summer. And I really liked the finish. Yep. So yeah, so I'm, I'm again, I'm already past. I've got the, the sleeve slid off. I've got my sleeves on my... Um, we just used pony lacing cord because it's it's basically it's got the little. Similar. It's very similar. It's basically got the little hole that you can attach it onto your needles, but like even here, like if I pull that, like that is not coming out easily. No, no. So even though I don't have that tied or anything, like unless I really slip those stitches off, like those stitches are there till I go to put them back on mm -hmm. the needle, and when you go to put them back, you just slip your needle tip into here, and it's so easy just to slide, slide the stitches on. back on. 
Because I used to always put them on just a piece of waste yarn. Yes. But then you're going in and you're, you have to pick have up to pick either one. And, and the first couple are always kind of buried down in the stitches because yep. they've been tugged yes. a little bit. So you have to really dig them out. Yep. Yeah. And I also, when I want to measure the width, I'll just stick it onto the end of my tips here, spread it out, and then I can measure the width of the... Very nice. How, like how much increasing I'm doing. They are going so. to love these. They're going to be so pretty. I, I hope so. I hope they so like them. So pretty. Bit. Anyway, I really like the pattern. It's it's kind of a fun pattern to knit. Um, again, I talked about on Knit Chat last Tuesday, but these little baubles, when you go back and do them, you have to actually knit three together through the back of the loop, mm -hmm. which the way you've done the stitches on the first row is a little bit difficult like to get your needle in there. So what I've been doing is I just slip the first two of them and then knit into the back of the third one and pass them over. And it's so much easier and so much faster. So I think if I did the festival sweater pattern that I got right goes up to like a child size 12 which is actually that well, would be your it size. will fit me right so yeah, I actually absolutely. really do think I would really like actually I'd really like a dress I think a dress would be great so, and you could just wear it with like, I mean I wouldn't like do tights. all the, the tutti fruity colors in it but <laughs> but you know if you did something like I thought even like if you did it like in a gray and then put like like a soft even a soft like cream colored mohair going through it mm -hmm. would look really nice like you could yeah, do a lot would. with you this you could do pattern. a lot with that pattern yeah. and I think it's going to be good for me it'll be ways to use up some of the hand spun mm -hmm. like just to give something a little pop of something yes so yeah it's yeah. really pretty so I'm, I'm really pleased with those patterns that um the festival dress and the festival sweater, sweater. yeah so very good okay that's it for whips okay did you buy anything this month that I want to talk about, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> now that we know Ross is upstairs. <laughs> That's right. We, can, we heard him come in. Um, a few things. <laughs> Did you? Okay. You yes. have more than I do. Well, no. You have more to show than I do. No, I no, don't. You don't. No, I don't. Acquisitions. Acquisitions. Okay. <laughs> do you want to start? Sure, I'll start. I only have one little bundle of acquisitions this month. Okay, so this is my first. And this is, this is just, I bought some more Patagonia. Um, it's Juniper Moon Farms Patagonia, but um, I had, did you have, do you have that gray one around? Yes. Where is it? Upstairs. Oh, okay, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> get it. But I want to put this, I have to get, I have to get one more, I wanna get one more of this. And then there's a medium gray, and then I wanna make the Opus shawl Ooh. for Ross. Ooh. Because like at night when he's cold, he puts my pink he puts my pink night shift around him. And I thought, okay, if you'd really put a shawl around him at night, then I, love I would this. knit. This this is like that gorgeous, like a garnet red cardinal. It's absolutely. But don't you beautiful. think if I got yes. like if I got the another one of these yeah. and then the that gray. I know the, I know the gray will look fine because it was it's it, Well, this isn't the same yarn, but it's a similar color. I think that's darker. Is that darker? Yeah. Okay, I can't reach it anymore. Anyways, anyway, so it doesn't matter. But but the other gray is kind of a medium gray, and I think it'll look really good together. And that I debated really using that or like a mustardy color, but I think that color looks really good. Definitely this. Yeah, so. this, this looks really nice. I love this. Anyway, so and I'm anxious to see that shawl because every one of the Opus shawls that I've seen, I've been blown away by. Yeah. So that's, that's Gorgeous. our... Um, 40th anniversary is in February, so well, better get I'll knitting. finish that one for him for our 40th anniversary. Okay. So that's my first. All right, keep going. She's got okay. One. This is just a skein. Um, it is 70% merino and 30% bamboo viscose. And this I got from Belfast Mini Mills. Um, the color, I don't know what they called the color. I can't remember. But I want to try more socks that don't have nylon in them. Okay. So that's only 50 grams, but I should be able to easily get a pair of shorty socks out of that. Like, I just want to try the socks with no nylon because I have one pair of socks that are the Mondeem yarn and they're 100% wool and they are like my favorite socks to wear. Okay. Because of the feel of them. So I really want to. And then she also. Yes, I ordered the. Samoyed yarn so that I can make the August hat. Or two or three. Or two or three. It did. I got those three out of it. And I mean, I have a picture of mine that shows right on the ball band that it's exactly the same. It's crazy. So. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. But I just really liked that color. So I thought, oh, I'd make a pair of shorty socks and see how it wears before I commit yeah. to making a lot yeah, of absolutely. stuff out of it. So. Okay. Um, everything that I got just came from the Knit Pick sale. I don't know. Did anybody 
else get in on that nitpick sale. Um, I grabbed, firstly, just, I have a tote box of stroll yarn, stroll yarn. And so if there's a color that I don't have and then it goes on sale, I grab it. And these are what I use a lot for my heels and toes. Yeah. And I just thought this was a really that pretty color. a pretty color. I know, I, now that I have this I color. I would do a sweater in that color. <laughs> called dogwood heather but i mean i would go back and get that do you like can you imagine that with like a mohair that sort of matched it i know and then it, it's that beautiful be, like, gorgeous? it's beautiful so i just like to collect sort of these little 50 gram skeins for heels and toes and then i also grabbed this one and i oh i don't have the ball band but it doesn't matter it's <laughs> it was in this and then my son came over and he brought little miss lola and Lola came down here to say hello. And she was just sniffing around in some of the bags and I didn't see her Grab abscond mm -hmm. this. And then a few minutes later, this was funny, he comes downstairs and he's, my son slinks across the room and he's unscrewing the ball winder. And I said, what are you doing with the ball winder? Never mind. And I said, <laughs> what are you doing with the ball winder? And he says, Lola got one of your skeins of yarn and I'm immediately thinking oh my gosh one of the things that I'm knitting with upstairs and I'm like which skein he goes I don't know it was kind of a brown color I'm like Ugh. <laughs> anyway I said don't touch the ball winder just bring me the yarn he goes I don't want to <laughs> I said, just bring me the yarn so he brought it down and it was he had it like scooped up I don't know how she did what she did to it so this was last night's project yeah but I got it back um so I grabbed that and then this it's just a single skein, but it's the Chroma Twist in worsted weight. Oh, that's pretty. And I thought this looked to me like the perfect little um, toque material for miles yep. or, I don't know, at 218 yards for you know a baby, what, you what can could do, you, you can, get? You can do a baby sweater. Out of 218 yards? Yep, out of worsted weight, yes. Okay, so I thought, I don't know what this was on sale for. I want to say it was like a ridiculous amount, probably under $5, but I thought the colors were really yep. nice and... It's funny because I think, I think it was Sheila that had said, because we were talking about someday teaching our grandchildren to knit mm -hmm. because now that we're not mm -hmm. parents, you know, we seem to have a little more time for that. And she sent me a message and she said, she said that she thinks Miles, my grandson looks like the perfect little <laughs> cardigan man. And I said, oh, I'll have him knitting. You can't, you, you definitely can't, especially if you use like, like maybe like a solid for the cuffs and the band. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think that was a really pretty colorway. So yep. that might get used. And then the other thing that I scooped up because they had this on for a ridiculous price too. Only in this color though, the Aloft, which is um, very much like the Drops Kid Silk that we use for the mohair. And this is, and you have one there, <laughs> and this is in the colorway silver. But I thought this is That's just pretty. the perfect um, colorway to add in with like so many yarns that you wanna do. It's just like a normal base. So I think I grabbed like 10 skeins of this okay. uh, just to have extra in the stash. And then the last thing that I grabbed, because I had made a pair of socks out of their static base. And static is one of those things that has a few mixed reviews. Some people said that it felted. I've now washed mine several times and not by hand. I've actually washed them in, um, in a little zippy garment bag that I use and I wash them in the machine and then I just hang them to dry. Mine have not felted. So I grabbed up three more colorways because these were all under $10. Wow. And so I got, uh, this one is called Boulder, which is just gray. And this one is Quest, which is like the maroons and grays. Yep. These are all very neutral. And then this one, which I really like too, was Beekeep Beekeeper. And it's uh, like a blue and some gold. Golden, that's pretty. So this one I thought socks because it's kind of a colorway I don't have for socks. But I, when I talked earlier about doing the muscle burra, I'm thinking yeah, one think of these. Would, yeah. And wouldn't that be pretty? Because it just creates this unique, it's not like a, it's, it's sort of like um, the other socks that I showed earlier. It's a random striping yeah. pattern, but it's a very subtle striping. And so I think that either one of these, so I think one of these is going to be my muscle burrow. Yeah. And I'm sort of leaning towards this one because yep. I, I kind of like this yep. one for myself, but I think it's nice to have some male sock yep. colors in your stash too. So that is all I got. Okay. So I did order some of the drops kid silk mohair. I ordered this from wool and silk. So I got eight skeins of this. Um, I've got a gray, uh, yarn that I got at Rhinebeck that's called, the color's called granite and it kind of has like a little pinkish tinge to it and I thought it'd be really pretty if it's I hold really pretty. that with it with the gray and I want to make the girlfriend cardigan mm -hmm. by Anka Strick. So yeah, really nice. 
And then the last things that I got, I got a couple of books. So this first one is Knit Mitts, and this is by Kate Atherley, and it's got mitts and gloves in it. So it's got like patterns for the gloves that tell you exactly how to fit every finger to your fingers. And you know how like when you do gloves, like if you're coming up and you're putting your fingers and your thumb in, like mm -hmm. your thumb comes off down here, but your fingers all come off at different places too. And a lot of patterns just do them straight across, but she tells you how to do them so that, you know, you've got each finger fitted properly. Mm -hmm. um, it's got adaptions for all weights of yarn, all sizes, like, you know, babies up to adults. It's got, uh, it's got mitts, fingerless mitts, gloves, fingerless gloves. So I think it'll be a really so good many resource patterns. book. Yeah. Yeah. And it is because you like, it's not just a book of patterns, nope. like everything in here techniques is are in there. all sorts of techniques. So yep. it's a real teaching tool too. Yep. And oh yeah, all the finished. Yep. It's got all, all, of, the your, charts. all of your charts for different sizes and the stitches Very for different nice. sizes, depending on what your particular gauge is. That's a great so, resource book. Yeah, I think it is. And it really wasn't that expensive. So I thought good investment it's got even got that they've got the pattern i think for those color work ones in there too mm -hmm. and i thought those were pretty the, the thrums yep. down here too yep i like these ones too oops they're there i yep. really like these ones yep. that's really pretty pattern yeah so. excellent and then the last and one was this. my yes, this is nice my fleece and fiber source book so this is this book basically goes through all different breeds um i forget how many breeds of sheep like in a, a over 200. It also talks about all different fiber animals like alpacas, llamas, possums, <laughs> samoyed. <laughs> um, what else is in there? There's quite, oh, yaks, bison. So, and it gives you the properties and characteristics of each, tells you what that particular yarn, what the best uses are for it, uh, tells you like, you know, like some spinning information about it. And I just think it's really interesting to read about all the different breeds too and what they were used for or yeah. what kind of coat they have. So I, I wanted this book for a long time, but I just, I don't know, never bought it. And I think I was sitting there one morning and I thought, I'm going to just get it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you're a little bit of a fiber nerd like us and you just want to know all the history behind the things. Um, yeah, there's even camels in here. Yes. Musk yep. ox. Yep. Goats. Yep. Goats. Yep. yep. Goats aren't even soft. Yes, they are. Go Mohair comes from a goat. And cow oh, hair yeah, comes from a goat. I guess. Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> so, right. But I'm thinking it just didn't sound like, I mean, when you think about it. No, adult, I know. You don't think not, of it. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, even all the sheep breeds are fascinating. And to know the history behind them and whether they're a pure line or whether they've been crossbred for specific purposes. Yes. It's just, I just find it really interesting. Yeah, it's a so, beautiful book. Yeah. It's nice to have these resources too, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. So beautiful. Yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping after Christmas, I'll have more time to actually read, read it. Yeah. Knit and so, read. Yeah. Right now it's just like, knit all the things and knit finish the things. all the things. Knit and the things. <laughs> yes. So, so, okay. Yeah. So and that's, that's pretty much what we have today. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, well, we should, we always do this. <laughs> we forget to say welcome at the beginning. We had, um, in our last podcast, we had, a uh, quite a bubble of new, yeah, new subscribers so like, and so you know, thank you for that welcome if you're new and for everybody that's returning and watches us thank you for thank joining you us for, like we really appreciate it we love doing this yes we've we just been sharing. over a year together now yeah. and it's been fun to be able to be back together to do the podcast because we were separated for yeah for a long time due to restrictions uh so it's been fun to get back together again and and we look forward to doing this yeah um, and we love all the comments underneath we love talking to you getting to know you knowing what you're making and yes um you know if you have the chance join us on tuesdays because we've got a really good group in there that a lot of the a lot of our our um, knitting friends that join us in that are getting to know each other too through the chat. Mm -hmm, so, you know, mm -hmm. we'd love for you to join us on that. Yeah, and, and you might find some knitters that are in your, your particular area. geographical right. area that you could, you know, meet with outside of Knit Chat too. Yep. So we love hosting that and yeah. Yeah. So again, we thank you for sticking with us even though, even though we seem a little scattered sometimes. Sometimes but we try. We, we try. try. We do. But, so, you know, our heart is in it. Yeah. If nothing else, our heart is in yeah. it. So, um, but yeah, definitely um, join us on Tuesdays because mm -hmm. we do, we are having a lot of fun in there. Yeah, it and is. We never know. We never know at the start of Tuesdays what it's going to bring or what we're going to end up talking about. But, but yeah. possum is a recurring thing. Possum is a recurring <laughs> Possum gate. Yes. I keep saying I'm going to get my possum yarn out. I'll have to do that for this Tuesday. Yes. Because we'll it is gorgeous yarn. I'm sure it is. So. It sure it is. Yeah. But, okay, okay, everybody. So, well... 
we're going to try and get another podcast in before Christmas. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's creeping up there. Like it's tomorrow. It's only three weeks till Christmas. I know. I know. But then in a day it's over. And, you know, we talked about this on Knit Chat. Um, and we both kind of had similar values that were aligned yeah. for that. It isn't so much about the, you know, the gifting or just the holiday itself. It's more the month of December for me just means, you know, it's an opportunity to get together with friends, yeah, friends family. that you may not see very often and family and uh, have some nice wine yeah. and just share yeah. and, and visit. And, you know, that's, that's the important thing. But the knitwear makes the season cozier. Yes. That's what we know. Yes. And I, do, I, well, we both do. I really like gifting it. I love gifting it. I know. So. I love gifting it and I love seeing people wear it. And, you know, that's, that's kind of like the best compliment. You know, it's nice when they say, oh, I love it. But then when you see them a month later and they're outside wearing it, that's absolutely the best compliment yes. of all. And I know, so. um, like my daughter, every time she sends pictures or something, if her feet are in the pictures, she's wearing the hand knit socks. And that makes me happy because I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of stitches that goes into a sock. Yes, we had that discussion. We had that discussion too <laughs> in Knit Chat. And uh, yes. Ah, I forgot Rachel's sweater. My finished objects. We'll just have to talk about it here. <laughs> I what? just thought of that when we're talking about stitches and number of stitches. Oh, goodness. And she, and she sent me some pictures of her wearing it. Okay. So we'll put those in. But anyways, we'll those just a, a, a quick little blip here. Uh, one of my other finished objects was the... Um, Winter's Winter Beach Cardi by Andrea Mowry, and I did it for my daughter-in-law for her birthday, which was yesterday, so I have already gifted it to her, but we will put some pictures in. Yep. I did it in Juniper Moon Farms, Patagonia, in the light gray colorway, mm-hmm. and the colorway looks great. It looks amazing, and she loves it, and we'll put some pictures in. She had it on. I wanted her to have it so she could wear it on her birthday, and she did, and that we were talking about stitches for it because I had put it... Um, hashtagged it on Instagram with the Nockney Swaymo, which is knit a sweater in a month. In a month. So, and they were judging your sweater, but it had to have at least 50,000 stitches in it. So I, I calculated all, all the stitches in it and it was over 82,000. And that's how we got into the discussion about okay, how, many how many stitches, stitches were in a pair of socks. socks. So, yes. so mm-hmm. we should have, we should have a, a, a number of stitches knit along sometime next year. We could do that. That yeah, would be fun yeah. too. Yeah, and then, you know, like, you'd have to keep track of your stitches. And for th- it is it isn't that hard once you get onto it, because so many rows, you, you're just knitting the same number of stitches, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. was, We were talking the other night, too, about knit-alongs that we want to host in the in the new year. And one of the knit-alongs that we came up with, or a viewer came up with, was a cable yes. knit-along. So we're going to be doing something with that in the new year, too. And then I think January, we talked about <laughs> slash your stash. Slash your stash. Slash your stash. <laughs> Um, so we have lots of different ideas. We'll just have to try and we should probably just like make out a plan for the year. <laughs> what? A plan? Oh my gosh. No, there can't be a plan. We have to fly by the seat of our pants. You know how we roll. Well, I didn't say we'd follow the plan. <laughs> <laughs> just like how we make notes for these shows every and we're yep. like, oh, let's we really do make notes. And my, and my winter's beach card really was on those notes. <laughs> it's the packing up of the things. That's what it, it is, is to bring it here. It is. So. So yeah, it's it's on there. Anyway, this time we're really gonna wrap it up, people. <laughs> we are. Okay. Thank you so much for joining yes, us. Bye. Have and fun. Happy knitting. Happy knitting. <laughs> Stay safe. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we're better live. I swear. We are. Oops, I'm not gonna start around <laughs> my ponytails. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to. Second. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's going in. <laughs> I chipped my tooth. <laughs> just think we needed to zoom out a little bit, but now it just. That's showing. Oh, I really did. <laughs> did you really? Mm-hmm.